on the day of judgment this is the first thing that you'll be questioned about and it is a means that Muslims communicate with their Lord. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. The Qatar World Cup 2022 will be taking place towards the end of the year. And of course those of you following football you'll know that the qualifying matches are now taking place. One such qualifying match really caught our eye and it was the match between Tunisia and Mali. Tunisia beat them 1-0, mashallah, but it was what they did afterwards which was the real victory. Yes, as you guys can see, the team got together and prayed their salah. Those of you that don't know what salah is, salah is prayer in Islam. And this is the same way that the prophets like Moses and Jesus also prayed with their head on the ground. So in Islam, salah, prayer is obligatory. Five times a day, it's obligatory. So it naturally follows that it is one of the five pillars of Islam. On the day of judgment this is the first thing that you'll be questioned about and it is a means that Muslims communicate with their Lord. So again we're seeing a people with fame, talent, money, despite having all that, they are putting their heads on the floor in front of the one true God. Now an atheist might be wondering, what is this mate? What is the point of all this? But I say to you, Mr. or Mrs. Atheist, you also not only worship, but you continuously worship. Okay, what is this bearded brown cloak saying? What? He's lying mate. I don't believe him. What are you talking about? Oh, calm down Dave. Look, let's say worshipping is knowing someone the most, loving someone the most, obeying someone the most and praising someone the most. Okay, how can you as an atheist be knowing someone the most? Well, it could be a celebrity. Okay, how are you loving someone the most? It could be your mother or your girlfriend. How can you be obeying someone the most? Well, it could be the government. It could be your boss. And how can you be praising someone the most? As we're seeing in the current climate, of course, it could be your nation. So bearing all this in mind, Allah says in chapter 39, is it better to have loads of these masters here yeah, or is it better for you to have only one master? Those of us that know a bit of Arabic, we know that the word ruh, which is soul, comes from the word raha, which means ease. So in other words, our souls are inclined towards seeking ease. And the only way we'll attain this ease is from removing ourselves from the shackles of others and submitting to the one true God. It's like the famous poet Iqbal said, this one prostration frees you from a thousand prostrations. In other words, submitting to Allah saves you from being controlled and submitted by a thousand other entities. It could be money, it could be liberalism, it could be feminism, it could be whatever. And those of you saying, yeah but it's all about freedom, you're still being enslaved to God mate. Yeah but look, firstly being absolutely free is not possible for a human being because being absolutely free is a quality of divinity, it's a quality of God. For us as human beings, freedom is not the goal, it's the means. The goal is of course being content, being happy. Freedom, true freedom that we attain from God is a means and for us to get that freedom, like I said, you've got to attach yourself to someone that is absolutely free and that is God Almighty. 
And before I end, some of us don't pray because we've made a dua or supplication to God and we didn't get it and we're angry. Why didn't we get it mate? Hang on a minute. God isn't your equal business partner that you do a specific act of worship and then he has to accept your prayer. It's not a transaction mate. Understand this is a slave master relationship. But in the same vein, let us not forget those that are lost, those that are confused, those that are hurting. You will find yourself when you find Allah. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Assalamu alaikum.